Hello big walkers, we are talking about how to best manage your dog's osteoarthritis. And there's many, many things that you can do to really, really help your dog have a more comfortable life and hopefully have a lot longer years because of it. So we talk about something called the multimodal management plan. And people think, what's that? What is she talking about? But it's actually really quite simple. Multi means many, modal means different types of interventions used concurrently to get best effect. Now it was actually traditionally comes from anesthesia where they would use multiple medications to get the best plane of anesthesia and the safest plane of anesthesia. So using multiple medications at a lower dose was a lot more safe and it was more effective than using one at a high dose. So it's been adapted and brought over into chronic pain management. And it's now in that situation means what different interventions can be used at the same time to best manage your dog's chronic pain. A classic example would be a dog that has been placed on an anti-inflammatory because they're obviously quite painful but the owners also put them onto a diet because they're carrying too much body weight. And they've also put down some rugs in the kitchen because the dog's been slipping on that kitchen floor. They've gone to the local store and picked up a dog ramp so that they don't have the impact forces jumping in and out of the car. And whilst they've been out, they've picked up a harness because they've seen that their dog struggles slightly with the patio steps. So by wearing a harness with a handle, when asked to do the steps, they can be stabilised to make sure that that activity is as safe as possible. That multimodal plan might mean that they end up going to see a hydrotherapist, maybe once a week, a physiotherapist. They might have laser therapy or massage therapy added to their management plan. The owner might choose to invest in a supplement that's gonna be working on the joint health in the background. So as you can see, multimodal basically means trying to get the best results by using many different interventions at the same time. So how do you construct a multimodal plan? So these are just my tips. First of all, we've got to make an assessment of your dog's pain state. So if your dog is painful, then we really do on welfare reasons need to intervene with a pain therapy, a pain relieving therapy. And currently in our medical practice, um, employing the use of an anti-inflammatory medication or maybe a monoclonal antibody is a very effective way of managing pain effectively and safely. Now, the only people that are able to prescribe are veterinarians. So that's going to involve a visit to your vets, discussing with them the case, collectively attempting to quantify your dog's pain and making the best decision with regards to medical intervention for pain control. Pain control is really es essential because pain left unchecked can get a lot worse. So leaving it and thinking that they'll get used to it is quite a flawed approach. Also, if pain is not addressed, then your dog will start to change their posture, their movement to try and minimise any pain they experience. And that can create further problems and complications. And also, we all know that if left in pain, your mood and your behaviour is likely to change. And you might find that your dog starts developing some less than wanted behaviours that become almost learnt. So by making sure that you get pain control at central to everything that you do, it's really good practice. So pain control, really, really essential. Next, I really, really want you to think about weight. It's a no brainer, free intervention. Get your dog's body condition score sorted. Get somebody's opinion on whether your dog is that nice, happy four to five out of nine. And if they're not, then start looking at how you can best manage that. We know that a reduction in body weight of 8% can cause massive improvements in degree of lameness. 
Then think about the, your dog's home environment and living environment. And are there areas that you've noticed that they struggle with? They might hesitate, they might stumble, they might misjudge, they might avoid. And could you potentially adapt it? If your grandma came back from hospital having had a bilateral hip replacement, you wouldn't put her on the top floor of the house. You wouldn't remove the handrail and you wouldn't give her furry socks to walk on a tiled kitchen floor. All of these things are really, really obvious when you think of it like that. Then you might wish to look at purchasing a supplement. And there are many, many to choose from. In this situation, I think about taking some guidance from your vet. There are many products on the market that are great, and there's many products on the market that are not so good. So choosing one that is recommended is ideal. Then you might say to yourselves, well, actually, my dog's pain is a lot better. Their lifestyle is safer. I'm working on their background weight. I've got a joint health supplement on board, but I know that my dog needs to have some rebuilds in that they've become weaker on their back legs or their front end heavy so that their gait is different, their posture is different, the way that they lay, the way that they sit, the way that they move is different. And I know that now that I'm controlling their discomfort, it's an opportunity to try and correct those imbalances. So then you might wish to have the um, support of a physiotherapist that can point out where your dog is struggling and how we can best manage that. And that might be with massage, it might be with therapeutic exercises, it could be acupuncture, it could be laser. There are many different things that we can do to try and correct the imbalances that have been created. So as you can see, you have these little categories to fill in. Do the Cam Essentials course and you'll learn so much more. See you later.